order order i'd now like to begin the panel session uh, for the international development committee this is our third oral evidence session on the secondary impact of covid19 on the um, uh, global south when you are trying to protect and promote lockdown economic recovery in de any developing country can you sort of expand on the on the role of microeconomic measures and more localised community level interventions? There's been a dramatic economic hit across the global south, which would have happened regardless of the measures countries have taken themselves towards the um, virus. So the impact of commodity price falls, the loss of tourism revenues, the loss of remittances mean that we have an unprecedented scale of economic um, collapse. So in Africa, the um, region is expected by the IMF and the GDP to fall 3% this year and to only grow by 3% next year, which means by the end of 2021, um, there'll be 7%, um, GDP will be 7% smaller than it was planned, meant, um, predicted by the IMF at the start of this year. And that is unprecedented. Um, there's not been before, um, since the IMF records begin in 1980, a um, fall um, in GDP across Africa as a whole region. The IMF is going to try and find it difficult to lend. So what is the answer? Because presumably home economics is going to be very difficult given that the, 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 the growth is zero. Yeah, I and mean, the problem for so many countries is that they don't have the ability to bring in the same stimulus measures um, that um, we have in the West that the, um, trying to do the same kind of quantitative easing or fiscal stimulus would have, have a, a risk um, inflation um, re-increases. So the... Um, the response has been for the IMF to lend um, a lot more money, but that's on top of a debt crisis that already exists in many of the countries. And so um, you're um, building up um, an even bigger debt bubble. A lot of those loans are actually being used to pay off um, debts this year, and uh, mainly to private lenders. And so it's effectively bailing out lenders who lend at high interest rates, supposedly because of the risks. Um, so the alternative approach um, would be to cancel debt payments so that countries could keep resources in their countries now and to um, help deal with the um, crisis. Well, well, just following on that, then look at the way that DFID, UK government, um, has sort of res responded to the economic development in the global, well, global south, as it's grandly called, before the virus arrived. And what it needs to do to adapt following your... I thought thinking now that we have a pandemic and that what happens when the pandemic is over, say second quarter of next year. Can you categorize what DFID and stroke UK government needs to be doing? Yes, yeah, so I mean, this is specifically in the area of debt. The UK's particular role is um, on the um, contracts that are owed under English law. So of the um, poorest countries, 90% of their um, international bond contracts are governed by English law, which means that they, um, if they try and restructure the debts, it's handled um, under English law. If they stop paying the debts, they get sued in UK courts. The head of the World Bank, David Malpass, has called on um, the UK and the US, the other key jurisdiction, to change the law so that um, it's easier for countries to restructure their debts, which can both help in the immediacy of the crisis and help recover if their um, debt payments can be reduced. So it's, um, I think it's important to look at um, all the um, ways that the UK is key in the world and around debt, it's this centrality of the UK legal system and our financial system to the debt contracts, which is where the UK plays a key role.